Welcome back to the Love Your Story podcast. Today we're talking about understanding one another through our stories. Sometimes something as simple as a pair of cowboy boots and a story can change lives. You know, the stories that make up our lives are the building blocks that when put together explain in large part who we are because they illustrate the paths that we've walked, the decisions we've made or not made. When these stories are shared, we open the doors to understanding one another, and that changes everything. Stay tuned for a discussion on understanding one another better through the sharing and listening to stories, and for a story about a girl in turquoise cowboy boots. Stories are our lives in language. Welcome to the Love Your Story podcast. I'm Lori Lee, and I'm excited for our future together of telling stories, evaluating our own stories, and lifting ourselves and others to greater places because of our control over our stories. This podcast is about empowerment and giving you, the listener, ideas to work with and making your stories work for you. Story power serves you best when you know how to use it. the many functions of story is that of sharing ourselves and our experiences with another person. Once someone knows our stories, they know many things about us. They know the triumphs and the struggles we have faced. They know our responses to those events and the people involved in those events. They know our attitudes and often we display our character by showing our choices during the unfolding of our stories and the lessons we learn through those experiences. Stories are very revealing. Does this create vulnerability? Almost certainly, if told well. Does it create understanding? Without a doubt. Does that understanding change the way we interact with one another? Often, often, especially when understanding is expanded. Let me share an example. This example was shared by Amy S. Choi on September 30th, 2015 in a TED-Ed blog called How Telling Stories Can Transform a Classroom. The blog illustrates how the work StoryCorps is doing in collecting and sharing stories makes a difference, in this case in a junior high classroom. And I'll tell you more about StoryCorps in a minute if you're not familiar with them. So Caitlin, she was a quiet seventh grader and she was bullied by the other kids in her class at Luther Burbank Middle School in Burbank, California. She wore the same cowboy boots every day, and the other kids were awful about it. Mrs. Milwaukee, the English teacher, introduced StoryCorps to her students, and she gave them each tape recorders and asked them to interview someone important in their lives. And then over the next few months, the class listened to each student's interview and discussed them together. Well, Caitlin, the gal who always wore the cowboy boots, had interviewed her mother. The two of them talked about their lives since Caitlin's father died of melanoma two years prior, when Caitlin was in the fifth grade. Before her dad passed away, he had wanted to get her something that would last forever. Together, they had gone and picked out a pair of brown and turquoise cowboy boots. A year later, Caitlin was diagnosed with melanoma herself. She had to have part of her foot removed. The boots her father bought were the only shoes that provided enough support for her to walk. None of the kids in her class or even her teacher had known any of this. They hadn't known her story. And when they heard it, they felt small and ashamed for having been so cruel. And with this greater understanding, the teasing stopped. And not just for Caitlin, but for everyone. Because they realized in this junior high classroom, They realize that once you come to understand people's stories, more things make sense. Mrs. Milwaukee said, telling our stories brought all of our lived realities into the classroom, unquote. And that changed everything. It changed what the children knew about one another, and thus how they reacted to one another, and thus how they acted and treated one another. Now that's a pretty big deal, and all because a story clarified someone's life. So let me tell you about StoryCorps. StoryCorps is an American nonprofit organization whose mission is to record, preserve, and share the stories of Americans from all backgrounds and beliefs. It's located in Brooklyn in New York City and it was started in 2003. 
their purpose is to remind us of our shared humanity, to strengthen and build the connections between people, and to teach the value of listening, to weave into the fabric of our culture the understanding that everyone's story matters. And that's a pretty awesome mission statement. If you go to their website, storycore.org, and hit the story tab, you can listen to story after story. And they're only about four or five minutes long. They're for people of all walks of life as they share a meaningful life experience that happened in their story. So I just got done listening to an interview with the mother and father of one of the victims of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Connecticut in 2012. They were discussing their story and the death of their daughter. Listening to the real heartfelt stories of others brings to our life an understanding of experiences beyond our own. Listening to their story suddenly makes that event more real to me. My empathy has increased. A connection to something that was very remote to me has has been created simply because I listened to their story. As shown here in the story of the cowboy boots, StoryCorps' mission provided the key to a wonderful learning experience that changed all those in the classroom through the sharing of that story. Um, I'll include a link to the StoryCorps website in the show notes so you can go and check out their collections of stories if you have an interest in that. We all have different life journeys. Often it's hard to understand another's journey, especially if ours is very different. But the only way we can get closer to understanding one another is to listen to one another's stories, to share and to listen, and in listening, try to understand and sit with the space of allowing without judgment. Henry David Thoreau, who is one of my favorite writers, said, quote, could a greater miracle take place than for us to look through each other's eyes for an instant, unquote. While literally being able to look through one another's eyes is, of course, not possible, the closest we can come is to share our stories, our perspectives. This sharing creates a space for connection. Let me share a couple of places this stands out to me. And these are just, you know, obviously a few of many, 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 you know, hundreds of options. And these are very mundane, but, but that's where we live. First, When men are going through a struggle and they try to tough it out and keep it to themselves, they often cause a space of disconnect because those who would help, often they're women, just feel confused and disconnected because they don't know what the issue is. When and if the man decides to share what is going on with him, there is often compassion, nurturing, and all the things that women do best. Women's hearts are softened when they understand a backstory, when they understand feelings or they sense a need but it requires the sharing of the story and what the other person is struggling with. This can also be turned around when women don't share what is wrong because they assume the man should already know when in fact he does not. Am I just talking about communicating with one another here? No, it goes beyond that. There is a difference in me telling you I am concerned or upset about something and communicating the idea and me sharing the background story that illustrates why I am concerned about it. It's the background story that allows for understanding and why a person takes an approach that they take or that they, the reason that they feel that they do. And these can be simple or complex, but let me just give you an example. So let's say I feel strongly that it's the man's job to lock the doors at night and make sure the house is safe my husband, which I don't have, this is a made up example, but he may not have this habit or he is busy with his own stuff and thus it doesn't get done or I have to do it. And I can say, hey, I'd I'd really like you to lock up the house at night. And he might feel like it's something else that's getting pawned off on him or something being added to his plate. But if I share the story about how When I was growing up, my dad always closed the house up at night. He went from door to door and window to window and made sure that the house was secure and that we were secure. And it created a space of feeling protected. Then there is an increased understanding for him of why I have the perspective that I have and why it would mean a lot for him to do that. It's beyond just pawning off another mundane house duty. When there is understanding, good people naturally orchestrate their lives with one another more smoothly. 
So I was talking with my friend about how this works in his marriage, and he said, you know, this happens all the time. But the way it plays out is she thinks she shouldn't have to explain why she is asking me to do something. So it looks like she asks, I feel irritated, she feels irritated. Then we get further explanation and share the reasonings, and then it gets smoothed out, and then we come to some kind of a solution. But what if when you made the ask, you took the time to explain the story around your ask, and the conversation could open and close without the irritation phase, and you could progress directly into a solution finding because you wouldn't have that rough spot there. And it's just as simple as sharing a story. Let me give another example, totally different kind. In my Story Launchpad workshop, this is a workshop I do for business professionals to help them find and strategize how to use their stories. One of the types of stories that we work on is the origin story. Now, in one workshop, I was working with a mortgage lender. As she did her work, she discovered that her story originated with a poor lending experience that she and her husband had had when they bought their home 20 or so years ago. At the time, she was not in the lending industry, and as they went through the process of purchasing their home, they were told they were approved, and then they were told they weren't approved, and it went back and forth, and there was terrible stress because it was a time when you could put sweat equity into your home before you closed on it. So they had already made investments of time and money into the home, and then they kept getting yanked around in this loan process. And to top it all off, no one discussed with them the cost of closing the loan. So they were unaware and had to dig up a bunch of money the day of closing. She didn't understand why it had to be so difficult. And she hated that they always felt like that they were on the verge of losing the deal. Well, she went into lending so that she could help others have a better lending experience. So she could keep the discomfort that she had felt out of the equation for those she worked with. When she shares this story with her clients and potential clients, they begin to understand who they are working with and why they can trust her. She's not just another fly-by-night lender hoping to make a buck. She's actually a dedicated professional with a purpose beyond herself, with experience in what not to do, and a really strong desire to give her clients a smooth and stress-free experience. Sharing this story allows her to become something more in the eyes of those that she works with or hopes to work with because it builds trust because they understand her better. The other day, a listener contacted me and said, I love the spaces where you get vulnerable. I love knowing that you've been divorced three times and that it has caused you embarrassment and the realness of your life. Not because she wanted any of those things for me, but she just said, by you sharing those real stories, it makes you real to me and I'm able to connect with you. It's just another example of how sharing our stories opens up who we are and allows that space of connection and understanding between people. So, This week, I recorded as a guest on the Shameless Mom Academy podcast, and as Sarah Dean and I spoke, she's the host, she shared a bit of her story about her infertility and her work in reframing her story to include only having one child, but being able to help more moms enjoy and excel at motherhood through her podcast and her personal work that she would not have had time to do if she'd had more than one child. As she talked about this and the way she'd reframed that space, her own personal struggle with infertility, learning how to make the best of it and shift it around in another way, I had, of course, greater understanding of her, greater appreciation for the work she's doing, an insight into her podcast and the purpose behind it. And really, that makes a difference. Are we listening to people's authentic stories? Are we building bridges with our stories? Today's episode is about finding our commonality through the sharing of our stories, because that commonality is stronger than our separateness. Albert Einstein said, quote, peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding, unquote. With the global nature of our world, the way we can access, trade, see, and interact with people from different cultures across the world 
means that it has never been more important to seek understanding through sharing and listening to one another's stories without judgment and literally with a spirit of attempted understanding. We are exposed to more people with different ideas. It's a wonderful treasure trove of possibility for expanding our understanding. In fact, you know, even within our own country, here in the U.S., the deep political divisions are strong. And while sharing our stories of why we each feel as we do may not change another's mind, it will increase understanding as to where others come from and why they have the perspectives that they have if we listen with a heart to understand and not simply a heart of fear or combat. Seeking to share stories and increase understanding is a step toward love in all relationships, from the most personal spouse and family relationships and sharing stories that help them to understand us and our quirks, to our neighbors with different ideas, to others we've never met and don't yet understand in different countries, religions, cultures. But story is the one key that we can use across all of these relationships to increase understanding. Who in your life, where perhaps there is a misunderstanding or discord, can you share a story with today that will help increase their understanding of who you are and where you're coming from? Where can you build a bridge by sharing a story or maybe asking for another to share their story? Think about that. Think about that and then act on it. I can picture Caitlin and her turquoise and brown cowboy boots and all the other children in their classroom sitting each day and listening to the story interviews that captured the inside lives of their schoolmates and these stories that none had previously been privy to. I can picture them listening and being fascinated. I can imagine through that one exercise the number of changed relationships, the empathy and the insight those junior high students gained by listening and sharing and suddenly understanding something that they didn't before. That is, that people have stories and reasons for the way they do things. That everyone's story matters. And that by sharing those stories, we open the doors to understanding. Thanks for being here today. I hope the discussion sparked an idea for a space where you can share a story that will create connection for you, or clarification, or reconnection. If you've got some comments or stories you'd like to share, head to www.loveyourstorypodcast.com and hit up the comment box under this episode. Also, don't forget to sign up for the free audiobook slash ebook, however you like to take that in. It's called The Key to Your Super Self, How Your Stories Unlock Your Superpower. And it's my free gift to you. All you have to do is sign up for it. It will be sent to you, no cost. Okay, when you head to the website to get it, just a a tip. Um, There's not a direct page, but a pop-up box will pop up when you visit the site and you can just sign up for it right there. And then it it will send it right to your inbox. And of course, one last announcement. If you haven't hopped on the 21 Day Challenge bandwagon, head to the website and sign up for a fun, productive, guided way to create more love, peace, and possibility in your story. These challenges that are going to come to you every day are things like doing a random act of kindness or getting rid of something in your space that you no longer need that you just haven't gotten rid of or giving someone the benefit of the doubt on that day. They're simple, but they're really profound when you do them, and they help you create your best life story. The idea behind the 21 Day Challenge is that you get to test out lots of these different tools in a very guided way, because daily you'll log on to a challenge page and you'll have an explanation and examples and things that you're going to, that will help you understand what that challenge is. And then you get to go and and interact with people in your life and implement that challenge. And the things that happen, the unknown, that's what's so fun, is the connection that it creates, the ripples in the pond. I'll see you next week for another great conversation on creating our life stories. Get into the insight on the 21 Day Challenge. We'll have links to that TED Ed blog in the show notes and also to StoryCorps. So we'll see you next week. Thanks for being here.